Who's ready for some lit sayings on behalf of my boy Dom? Let's get it. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, yo, what up? What's good with y'all? Back with an absolute classic. You guys know I stay with my same combo plate with the crispy, bubbly Vietnamese spring rolls. Gotta have them. We got to, some SIGs to light. Anybody who's been with me long enough knows that we have our SIG light and sauce. Of course, right here, that's that sweet and sour extra on the side. And uh, I have to say, big shout out. This is, this is a long time coming uh, to my boy... <coughs> <laughs> frog and throat uh his name's not frog and throat i have a sound like i had a frog in my throat but really uh dom uh he's come through many times in the past some of his favorite videos are the chinese videos he hit me up a while back saying like yo can i sponsor a meal for you you pick whatever and i was like i just haven't had chinese in a while he's like i was thinking chinese and then we were talking about maybe incorporating some noodles into it but Food is crazy expensive. This alone with tip was like $46. It's a combo plate for one with the addition of the two spring rolls and some extra sauce. So, you know, with tip and everything, it came to $38.99. And then with tip, it was like $47 basically. But anyways, Dom is providing. So big shout out. He's also been a member, a paid member of the channel. I think it's like four bucks a month or something like that for 37 months. So congrats to you brother anyways he's been one of my most loyal like dedicated just bros through the through the magic of the internet for so long i'm very out of focus somebody mentioned that on last video like it seemed like i was just constantly out of, like both the food and me were constantly out of focus there's like this half watch i'll put it up a bit and then it's like here i am now the food's blurry and then down here, it's like, oh, food, but then I'm blurry. And I never know which one to pick. So I'm like, do you guys want to see my face or the food or the food in my face? So it toggles back and forth. I'm also talking a lot. But uh, we're going to have a convo today while I toggle about like kind of a deep chat that I had with my dad. It's going to touch on like spiritualism, po possibly some atheism, and then what I've been going through lately in life and all that so we're gonna have like a more deep chat today um but before we do anything more like we must pour and we're gonna get our energy vessel up today we're going in with a red bull and that's actually going to kind of incorporate and work into what we're talking about isn't it interesting that the two leading energy drinks on the planet both have like uh they relate to the beast, if you will, the beast, the devil, the, the horns, the monster, the beast. So Red Bull, so Red Bull, obviously, what does that mean? Well, if you think about a Red Bull, what do you think of the devil, right? <laughs> red Bull, because it's a red bull with the horns. Uh, and then it's like Red Bull gives you wings. So there's this devil angel dichotomy even in their slogan they're saying like you know red bull gives you wings and then they used to like fly up to heaven but really it's kind of like devilish and then there's the the monster can which is monster unleash the beast right that used to be their saying monster unleash the beast so the beast being 666 and the monster logo is three hebrew uh sixes like if you look into the into the hebrew and there's a there's an upside down cross on it it's anti it's a it's anti-christish and it's very interesting that the two leading energy drinks <laughs> in the b system are dichotomous but they're like rivaling against each other but they are the same type thing so um yes let's have a bite here and then talk about kind of this talk that I had to have with my dad, he wanted to sit me down and have a deep talk one day over dinner, just the two of us going out for dinner uh, to kind of try to get to the bottom of some things that I was going through. But uh, we'll unfold that here real soon. All right, first things first, I had to pre-dunk it. I had to pre-dunk this bubbly spring roll, right, for a thumbnail. But here we go, the SIG is lit get a bite on this hmm? 
grasped it entirely too long since I've had one of these. Wow. Incredible. Thank you, Dominic. What a beauty. Of course I forgot paper towel. Bear with me one second. All right, one more bite of this. And I'm going to get into <laughs> perhaps some pretty deep combo. Definitely spiritual combo. Try to explain myself and explain this conversation I had with my dad. So, if you guys have been with me long enough, and if you haven't, I was raised not in the church, never any uh, doctrine pushed down my throat. Not reading the Bible, nothing like that. Just living a very almost atheist style life, although I was never coined or declared myself as an atheist. I just wasn't raised with any doctrine. No spiritual context at all. Just like, hey, here's life. School, sports, playing, work, money, friends, da 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 da. You know, never considered any of that stuff really. Went to church a handful of times for various reasons for, you know, weddings and things like that, funerals, but never lived in that world really. So, not something I'm, I was super familiar with, right? Just never was in my home life or in my life at all. My dad is a very, very of the world, material person. A fixer, a builder, a can't sit still till everything's done type guy. He doesn't know. Like, to catch my dad in meditation or anything like that, like, or even questioning his spirit or soul or anything. It is completely unheard of. And when I've talked with him about the concept of God, he doesn't try to, like, viciously or maliciously denounce God but he basically his whole perspective and lens is that evolution science primordial goo death is nothing it's like we weren't even here so da 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 right that's his whole outlook and then his whole other thing too is like which is a sound argument, is like, well, where's God when there's war going on here? And where's God when all these kids are dying over here? And where's God when a child has cancer? Why, you know, why would a parent have to go through that? Why would this kid get born just to die? What, you know, what kind of God is that? That's his whole look on things. So very scientifically minded, basically atheist, and he's outright said to me, no, there's no God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in anything like that. He's like, I believe that I exist for a while, and then I die. But he's always done 
been like he's always worked hard. He's super type A, very anal. Everything's neat, tidy, clean. Like I said, he can't sit down until everything's done. He doesn't know how to be, be still, relax. And really, I don't think he knows how to go inward or question. Question eternity, question the ether, question spirit, question, you know, if I had to guess, he probably doesn't even believe in a soul, to be honest with you. Well, this is how I kind of know, and this is where we get into the conversation. So, let me spin this around. I've been going through, because as I've gotten older, I've noticed as more of my artist brain, the way that I think, and just doing studies and research on YouTube, which is a whole other problematic thing for me because I was never, I was left to f seek my own truth in life, to find my own way in what resonates with me um, in terms of like spirituality and what to believe in and considering the afterlife and considering the universe and considering God and ourselves and, you know, just finding my way, right? Coming to my own truth, my own way of belief so that I can solidify some sort of identity. And so that identity and that structure and that value system, and that, that mode of being, that way of being, the way of perceiving the world and what you might believe in helps you to navigate the world because it gives you identity structure and then it gives you northern star. And if you have I identity in northern star, then you can move more effectively through life because you're not all willy-nilly by the seat of your pants. It's like you know what you stand for and you'll stand for something rather than fall for anything type thing, right? So I've been on my journey personally because I feel like there's something greater beyond this. Because I've been wrestling with my eternity for the last, I don't know, five years maybe. Because I can't believe that this is just some random event that's lights out at the end and it's like you didn't remember before you don't remember after so then what's the point of anything so it gets real dark it gets real nihilistic so if you think like that it's like well why would i do anything because if i didn't remember before and i won't remember after then nothing matters and if nothing matters then you can act any way you want, right? <laughs> Murder, rape, steal, kill, pillage, da 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 da, da. If, if nothing matters, then that's like a possibility to go that mode of thinking, which is not a good way to think. So anyways, back to YouTube and that being problematic is for somebody who's trying to find what resonates, where I fit, maybe what to kind of follow, what to adhere to maybe in terms of my spiritual beliefs. And the problem with that for me is I've been so open-minded my whole entire life because I was never indoctrinated into any one thing. I am open to so many different ideas. And so I've done such a wide spectrum of research and it was just, it's been more and more confusing, right? The 
more roads I take, the more confused I become. So the, the, the less identity I seem to have, the more open and malleable, but the more lost, right? Because that's the catch of it is when you feel lost like that, you don't have identity, you don't have Northern stars, you don't have compass to help shape and guide your purpose. And then maybe you're left open to be toyed with by the wrong things. So I've been going through like the dark night of the soul now for a while, trying to figure out identity and structure and purpose and what I want to commit to relative to, to my spirit and spiritualism. Cause I, I personally believe in like a soul cause I personally believe there's something uniquely inside of me that makes me, me beyond this flesh vessel and all the information that's ever come into this flesh vessel, because that's just, my biological com meat computer being able to regurgitate the things that I've learned. But as somebody who's written many songs and things like that, chicken balls intermission on that thought. Um, I know that mm, perfect white meat. I, I've created things that are like they're of me, but I don't know how I came up with a lot of it. It just doesn't make any sense. I've written things when I'm in that state and used verbiage and tied together stuff that I don't even cognizantly really know about on my day to day basis. It's strange. I don't know how to explain it, but, um, so I feel like I know that I've been either used as a vessel, a through line for some sort of interdimensional creative consciousness. And maybe that can be explained scientifically with the brain. You know, maybe there's something completely empirical for that, but I doubt it. So I've been battling with depression, anxiety. And then as y'all know, for a while, like really some rough alcoholism. Not that I'm proud of it. In fact, it's, it was my greatest nemesis. Um, but probably this is about, I don't know, maybe eight months ago type thing. I guess my dad was finally like, he's like, I'm open to listening to what you have to say about what you're going through. I'd like to try to at least understand your perspective um, as a father and as somebody who cares about you. Like, we should go out for dinner. And he's like, instead of even trying to, he's like, I'll just do a lot of listening at this point. Cause I, maybe I don't, I haven't listened to you well enough in the past when you're trying to explain what you're going through. So shout out to him for being open for that. So we go to this uh, restaurant called Chicago Joe's. And actually that's in my death row meal. I got wings from there. They make amazing wings. Um, and we sit down to have, have, have dinner and a chat. And, uh, The waitress comes over and I'm starting to try to like explain and 
And then you get it interrupted with, by the waitress, and it's like kind of awkward. But he orders like a quick steak salad, and I ordered chicken fingers with a side Caesar salad because they have amazing chicken fingers there. They're like mustard battered or whatever, like mustard beer batter. They're so good. Side note, but they're very, very good. Um, and I start trying to explain myself to him about like the spirit, soul, spiritualism, deeper side of things. And like I said, he just doesn't think like that at all. He's so material of the earth. A fixer, a builder, a doer, and basically an atheist. And I tried to explain the concept to him so that he could get where I'm coming from about what I've been going through. But I'm like, okay, in the simplest terms I can offer you. I'm like, you're telling me as you sit here right now that you are nothing more than a compilation of all the information that's ever been input into your bio meat computer, aka your brain, and that everything that makes you you your personality, everything you're good at, everything that you're not good at, all the things about you, your whole entire encompassing person, right? You're telling me that you are an amalgam of just everything you've ever experienced and all the information you've ever in, in, input into your brain and you just basically like robotically... No soul, no essence, nothing unique, nothing that makes you, you, one of one, scarcity, unique, human, in my best estimation of what that feels like, human, you're telling me that you're just a composite of everything you've ever experienced and then you just go about your day and regurgitate things and that allows you to move through the world? And the problem solving skills and whatnot. But, and he's like, well, yeah, scientifically speaking, that's how it works. <laughs> and I was just like, so you don't believe <laughs> that there's like an essence inside of you that makes you, you though, like hum, hu human, uniquely you. And he just said, he's like, not really, no, I just, I never really thought about anything like that. I just, I've always got up and <laughs> went to work and lived my life and dirt bikes and kids and friends and cigarettes and electrician work. And he's like, I don't know, I just go and live my life and I don't think about stuff like that. He's like, I just don't think like that. But he's like, as you ask the question, though, he's like, no, I really think that I am just this amalgam of everything that I've ever learned, and I use my brain and everything to navigate the world. And I was so, like, I asked, I'm like, doesn't that crush you in your existence thinking that like you're just this robot like you're just this robotic because i can see in him that there's unique traits that make him him right like i can see that he's an he is an individual he is a one of one And that there's something about him that makes him uniquely him. Like everybody else in the world. And to me, that's soul. That's essence. That's... You 
you know? And so I'm trying to explain it to him and he just, he's not like that. He can't, he couldn't really grasp the concept, like in terms of like, I guess, agreeing with it. He was just like, I don't know. He's like, I just don't see life like that. And I'm like, are you an NPC? <laughs> no, my dad's not an NPC, but. In fact, he's like an overactive player. Just doing too much all the time, in my opinion, but that's just the way he is. But, um, yeah, and I was just trying to explain to him, like, I'm just going through, like, a soul thing right now, uh, a spiritual thing, uh, an identity thing, a group thing, a belonging thing. And a considering of eternity thing. Because this is a temporary experience. I'm in a temporal vessel. As we all are. And so needless to say, after the dinner... Though he listened, really made no headway in understanding my perspective. He, tr he tried, though. I'll give him that. He made the effort. So the effort counts. And I have no beef with my dad at all. I love the guy through and through. I admire him. I look up to him. At times, I wish I could be more like him. I do share a lot of his traits, though, in terms of, like, being anal retentive, keeping things clean, organized, neat, all that type of stuff. But I also share the side of my mother, who's, like, she's very, you know, esoteric or ethereal and spiritual, and she's tapped in in a different way, like, She's kind of clairvoyant a little bit at times. She has been in the past. She has proven some future telling abilities. And so I have like almost equal parts of them in me. So I pretty much, I guess I know why I am the way I am in that regard, but. I was just so floored or dumbfounded or that my, my dad could not. He couldn't get there. He couldn't really conceptualize it. He's just so, he's so stoic, right? He's so steadfast stoic. In the way that he operates, he's just, he's just so like head down, get it done. I don't have time to even care about these spiritual matters or soul matters or life beyond the grave type matters. Because he's like, I got shit to do here right now while I'm here. And while I understand the utility of that way of thinking, and it's great for living this life in an optimal way, but you don't sit down to really introspect and reflect and not worry, but <laughs> get yourself right with eternity. Or get yourself right with the next phase of your transcendence beyond this body. Like, I think that's got to be the most important thing in life. But then again, it's not to people like that because they don't think that there's anything else. So they're just like, I, I'd rather just do it all here now. And so they live right in the material. And that blows my mind. 
because as interesting and fun as the material is and can be, I have to think that I need to have my checks and balances when it comes to the here and the there, <laughs> the beyond, the, the post-temporal, right? The post-temple. Because I will, this temple will, will <laughs> decease, <laughs> right? Cease and desist. <laughs> Cease to exist. And there's got to be something beyond that inside of me that's more than just this. This is how I feel in life. Like I, it just ha so I got to get like, isn't that the most important thing to get in order? Right? Before it's time to go? I personally think so. But not everybody thinks that way. So, anyways, like I said, deeper talk, talking to your parents about your beliefs, um, and uh, enjoying a delicious plate of Chinese food that, once again, shout out Dom, love you, my guy, you know that you're a rider for life, we got this shit. Oh, wait, I gotta have my fortune cookie. After all that spill, gotta have a fortune. Uh-oh, battery's dying, gotta go fast, it's blinking red. It is time to help a friend in need. Well, I don't know if you see that. I can't think of somebody deeply in need right now, but if, uh, if somebody around me comes to mind, I'm down to help. Just like Dom did for this video. All right, till the next one. Eat good, live well, stay true. <laughs> Peace.